This is Connor Buck, and you're watching a show with Zay Frank. This weekend, this weekend was a That Makes Me Think Of weekend, and it's because, because I stumbled upon this hummingbird nest. Look at their little eyes, their little beaks in the air. The clip is short, I didn't want to piss mom off because my fencing skills are a bit rough. But these hummingbirds made me think of hummingbirds and their really long beaks, which are just casings for their even longer tongues, and that made me think of other animals that have such specificities and oddities like the Indian peacock, which can barely move because of its giant tail. And I thought about people and how bland we are in comparison, such fleshy and hairless things, no horns or giant tongues, so average. But that makes me think of one thing that we humans do have that may have grown in an abnormal way, our brains, and more specifically our conscious minds. We're so proud of our consciousnesses. We say that it's who we are, our ability to think and perceive. Our conscious minds are the captain of this fleshy ship, telling it when to go shopping, how to tie a shoelace, and when to hold hands. We're so damn proud of it, like a peacock's proud of its feathers. In the 1980s, physiologist Benjamin Libet found that he could measure specific brain activity corresponding to what someone was about to do almost half a second before they became conscious of deciding to do it. This experiment has been replicated by others, but it's controversial, not because of the experiment itself, but because of what it suggests. And what it suggests suggests is that when we decide to stand up or decide to press play or decide to say something, that decision's already been made for us and our conscious mind is just taking credit for it. Instead of being captains of this fleshy ship, we're just spoiled children that live under the illusion that we're in control. We're just along for the ride. But if that's true, why do we have consciousness at all? Some scientists are proposed that instead of free will, we have free won't, where our conscious minds have some kind of a veto power. But if that's true, where does the impulse for the veto come from? What if our conscious mind is some weird byproduct of the way we develop that's totally useless but has become perfect in justifying itself. Giant peacock feathers of grandiosity. I did that, I did that too, I did that. And that makes me think, what if there isn't just one conscious mind in us? What if there's many all sitting next to each other, all unaware of each other, and all taking credit for the same things? What if that's what deja vu is, where your conscious mind bumps up against one of your other conscious minds that's thinking exactly the same thing, and you both think, hey, I've thought that before. And that makes me think of, what if a stroke could suddenly disconnect one of those conscious minds from the rest of you? There's this syndrome called alien hand syndrome, where after a brain injury, one of your hands all of a sudden seems to act on its own. For example, one patient was observed putting a cigarette into her mouth with her controlled right hand, following which her alien left hand came up to grasp the cigarette, pull the cigarette out of her mouth, and toss it away before she could light it. The patient then said, I guess he doesn't want me to smoke that cigarette. If you're interested in more on this subject, you can pretend to decide to buy one of the two books behind me. And now the wonderful Stefan Bucher will make a solution to one of your problems. Matthew writes, I have to make these stupid fucking charts at my new job, and they have Excel 2010, and I'm used to Excel 2003. In the new version, everything is different. You don't get the wizard. You can't just right-click on things and change them. Ugh. Understood, Matthew. The problem isn't that your Excel is too new. The problem is that your personal operating system is too old. So we're going to upgrade you to the 2010 version of you. So just click OK, and you're fine. Problem solved. Bye-bye. It's the bye bye song. It's the bye bye song. Everybody, everybody.